We're now going to see how to build a parking recognition system that will work with CCTV cameras by using computer vision. The system will be able to detect free parking spots and also specific locations of the car in real time. We will talk about the technology that you need to use, the challenges that you need to go through, and I will guide you through the main phases of the entire project. Let's go. Hi, welcome to this new video. I'm Sergio, I'm a computer vision consultant, developer and course instructor, and I help developers, students, and startup founders to develop computer vision projects in the easiest and most efficient way. The project we are going to see today is about detecting, detecting free parking spots uh, from a real footage with CCTV camera. If you search online for such project, probably you found some material, but it's usually not the best material for like two reasons for at least the one that I saw, I saw a few of them. One, the view that they use, it's not a real scenario because it's mostly a drone footage. So we have a few clips where the, there is a drone above a parking spot that stays for a few minutes and we can attack the cars right there. So that's one thing. So the, the footage that you see it's good for an exercise, but it's not a real scenario because th there is no drone that it's always flying in the same position of the parking spot. Second, I see that many of these have the, used the wrong technology, which can be again good for an exercise, but it's misleading if you want to build uh, a real software, a project that can help companies uh, for any reason. It could be like for security systems, for just statistics, if you want to gather statistics of the, the, the parkings, of how many cars are coming and so on. So of course it depends on the client that you have and who you're building this project for. We're going to see the main phases of this project starting from the position of the CCTV camera. So to understand what's a good angle to build this project, uh, how the camera should be placed, when we don't have the perfect position, can we still uh, build the project? Uh, we will see also a few features that we can implement with this. For example, how we can detect not only how many cars are there, but like the, the free parkings also, uh, also classify the different locations because maybe you have like some reserved parking spots, you have some free parking. So we can do a lot of things with this. We can also put some forbidden area where you, we could send a lot of alarm system and so on. So first we'll check the position of the camera. We'll talk a bit about the technology. And I also want to let you know that if it's the first time for you that you are checking this, or if you're not familiar with computer vision, but you want to learn more about computer vision, I have a free crash course linked down below. It's called computer vision blueprint, where in around one hour, I'm going to teach how you can build software to detect and track any object in the most efficient and fastest way. So in that one hour, you'll get a lot of knowledge, very compressed, I can guarantee you that, so that at least you get the right path and you know if you are going on the right direction. Let's now go to our project. Let's start from the uh, with the first part of this project, which is the camera angle. And let's be honest, like the CCTV cameras are usually the worst uh, first in quality, so the image quality is very bad but also a lot of time also the position doesn't allow you to see that much and also that well. What we are going to see now is three wrong camera angles and three good camera angles for your project. I will start with the bad ones. This is an example of a very bad camera angle that will not allow you to do the project. How can you understand if the camera angle is bad? Well, there is one main thing that you can see. If from the camera you cannot see well all the cars, it's already a big problem. Especially a bad camera angle is when the camera is in a low position and it's also on the side. Because low position, it means that the car, like the cars that are in front are going to cover the cars that are behind. When it's low, at least when it's high, even if it's on the side, you can still see farther away. We will see also some other example that we have in the video. But uh, let's talk about this specific scenario. If we want to detect the cars that are in this, uh, let me draw something, that are in this region away, it's very hard. 
So if we have a van, a big van that it's placed right here, we will like uh, all the positions right here will be covered. Also, it's very hard to detect on which exact parking spot they are uh, they are located because we don't see very well the cars. If we uh, zoom a bit on this scenario, like if we check like the car that is far away, that's the only view that we have of the car. If the car, the other car in front was bigger, we wouldn't even see that car. So this is a terrible camera angle. Don't do projects with these camera angles. Uh, ideally, the camera should be placed, for example, on the top of this building could be. So if the camera was here, you will see properly all these rows. And also from the same camera, you will see well also all of them. So not on the side, better in front of the car. Oh, this is for later because this, this is a good, also this one is a good example. Let me find the bad ones. This is another example of bad camera angle. The camera is a bit more on the top, but still uh, it's on the side. And even though we could somehow get approximately the number of the cars when the, this parking is full, is full, still it's, it will be very hard to detect the exact position of the cars in the parking for the same reason that we explained in the previous in, in the previous screenshot but you get the idea this is slightly better but still it's not a good sample uh, let's see now another example of bad sample this is another bad one mm, very hard to detect uh, all far away all these cars it's very hard to detect them uh, this could be better but still you see uh, they are we, we see them only a very small part of this car with this camera angle for example you could guess what cars we could properly detect and one of them it's this row because we see them very well one two three so the camera is frontal in comparison with these cars right here so frontal and high from the ground is always the best. So with this camera angle, we could detect mostly just these cars. Also, even if it's a bit tilted, not exactly frontal, also this row right here will be, will be okay to be detected. All the rest, definitely not, not for this, not good. This is a good example. Now, now let's go to the good examples. This is a good example because the camera is very high from the ground. So it's on top and there is no way that a camera can hide. Uh, sorry, not that, that a car can, can hide another car. And we get all the, okay, we have just one problem that in this case, the trees is hiding a car, but ideally there are no trees in where you are like, that are hiding the parking. So only one parking of this area, it's not well visible, but all the other parkings, you can see, no matter how big is the vehicle in one of them, there is no, none of them will be ever covered by another vehicle. So this is a very good camera view that you can use for your project. So this is absolutely good, uh, a good CCD camera for parkings. Also, this one is quite good we can we can attack the big area from this one so of course we can attack all these rows very well but also we can detect at least this frontal line right there of course uh, the other cars too far away are not to be considered from this view of course if the client is asking to to have all included you can work with multiple cameras so that's the the good way to go few cameras placed in a strategic strategic position will do the job really well and let's see one last good example and so we see most of the parkings very well so we are good with all of these and also all of these ones the the there might be only 
some problem with the latest parkings uh, right here so we need to take that into account this is uh, not the perfect still challenging but still you can you can build a project for that and i'm i'm also taking into consideration consideration this because when you build the projects for the clients it's not always that you have the option to put the camera where you want uh, it might happen that the client will say hey i have this camera i cannot change the position can you do something with these cameras and so you need to adapt and find the best way to get the the accuracy and like good parking detection with that i use this one as example and we will see uh, some more features with these specific parking spots we will talk now about what technology you can use and how to approach the problem uh, let's now talk about the technology that you should use so what i use and what i usually recommend is python python because you can create prototypes very fast with python with a few lines of code python plus deep learning with deep learning you can have an object detection model like the one that i'm using that can detect the vehicles so by using python opencv and deep learning you can detect in real time the vehicles like this is doing right now or it's uh the video that i'm showing you it's not a, a recorded video i'm i'm running this in real time with the code so that you can see how this is working don't make the mistake because and i'm telling you this because i saw some projects called like parking detection projects online made by some students in some universities that would use a very basic approach like background subtraction or like something that will will see if there was some difference uh, which for example it's a very basic approach where you see that this is the parking spot when it's empty so you you take a screenshot of the empty parking spot then if there is some change then you say oh if there is a change there must be something probably there is a car when you see that probably in some video footage that it lasts only two minutes maybe it can work 100 percent fine and you see oh the, the result that that i see it's incredible that this project is giving me but when you apply that on a real scenario it will not work and the reason is very simple on real scenarios the there are lightning changes so of course at some point the sun is going to go down and it will be different from the parking spot picture that you took before there might be other objects that are going to the parking spots that are not cars so you don't want to consider that uh, as cars there might be shadows and there are, there might be a lot of like something that you cannot predict but they are not vehicle and that will say your, the parking spot is occupied so avoid doing that again uh, for object detection with OpenCV and deep learning i have uh i have it's explained something in the workshop but also i have a full course where i explain how to build this project also i you will find also the tutorial with the source code of this specific project on my course object detection with OpenCV and deep learning but no matter how you choose to go forward just remember use some object detection model that can detect cars don't go with approach that seem very simple but then that you see the ready source code but that they don't work in real scenarios uh, this is in general the technology that you need to use let's now get more a bit inside how can you detect if there are not only how many cars but how do you detect if the cars are occupying some specific spot so let's draw something once you have the object detection model running so you are familiar with that uh, you have the car uh, all the cars surrounding by a box so let's simulate that let's say that you have the object detection model running and the object detection model is detecting this car so you have a bounding box of course when you have a bounding box you know the exact position so you know x and y position of this box x and y of all the angles so 0 0.1 0 0.2 3 and 4 once you know the position it's already a starting point what you could do is to predefine the parking spot position so on your program you will draw the exact 
spots. So you will do a polygon for each spot and you can assign a name. Let's say that this is the position A1. Then we can have the position A2 and so on. So if we assign the position to this one, let's say that this is the row A, all this row that you see right here is the A, and we have row B so that we can make a distinction somewhere here. And we have B1 is this parking spot. With simple geometrical operations, you can understand if the car is inside. Either you can check the intersection of the two boxes, as we have right here, or we can make this more simple. Okay, let me remove everything. Let, let's make this more simple. Instead, when you make object detection, instead of having the entire bounding box of the car, we can just get the center point of the car. Because of course, when we get we object detection, we have the exact coordinates. So we can get the, just the center point and this is the parking B1, parking slot B1. No, sorry, it will be inside B1, it's this one. Is the point inside the polygon B1? Yes, so it means that this parking spot is occupied. So very simple, it's geometrical, very simple operations. Once you have the detection, you define the polygons. Most of your project is pretty much done. Let's see also some features that you can play around with because the, the client might have very specific requests and I'm going to give you a lot of ideas of potential requests that you might get. One will be to have maybe some reserved parking spots. So you can see that this location has yellow parking spots, but also blue parking spots. The blue ones are the reserved parkings. And we have one here, two, three, and four. These are reserved parking. So we can call them R1, R2, and so on. When a car is inside, so if a car comes inside this specific parking spot, you will have the dot. So you will have the center of the car detected. Is the car inside the parking R1? Yes. So you know that a car is on the reserve spot. And of course, I cannot go into details of the project, but you can do a lot of things. You could check is the right car inside there. You could check the color of the car. You could check the, the plate of the car. Not from this angle, of course, we cannot see the plate. So at least you could check the color of the cars. You could record some statistics. When did the car enter? So once the car is inside, you can save this on a database. So of course, once the car is, is inside, you know that R1 is occupied at this specific time. You can put that into a database. Once the car leaves, you know when the car left. So either you can make some automatic parking pricing system or another, another thing that the client might require you is to add forbidden areas. So let's say that this park, this green park right here is a forbidden area where let's say that that some car if doesn't find parking they illegally they place the car in this spot right here by defining a region forbidden area this orange one forbid forbidden area you can check again is inside this region any vehicle if yes your software might be implemented connected to either some emailing system. So uh, you can send the email to whatever needs to receive the email it could be SMS system, alarm system, anything. So you can have uh, just an alert in real time if there is something that it's not supposed to happen. And I would say that this is pretty much what I wanted to talk about this project. I'm making myself a bit bigger now. Uh, this is pretty much what I wanted to talk about this project. If you have any questions about this, let me know, like also other ideas that you will have for, uh, for suspect specific uh, parking spot detection system. 
Again, I want to let you know that you can learn to do all of this, whether you are a developer, a student, a freelancer, a beginner or a startup, you can learn how to do this. I have a crash course where I give you a starting point and also I have a full course where also the source code of this project is included. So you will get a more in-depth tutorial where I walk you also through all the source code uh, that I used to build this project and you can download also this project from the course. Let me know if you have any questions regarding this or if you have any other ideas for other projects. If I find that interesting, I'm going definitely to, do, to bring a video about that. This is all for today. See you in the next video.